I got this LED sign. You can see LED. I don't know what model it is or anything. Right here. That might be it. It just came in the mail today. That's probably the model number. And I'm gonna open it up and unbox it for you. Lots of packing material. Hopefully it's protected. Because uh, if, something, if something got banged into this, there would be a problem. You can see it's got these rigid plastic corners on the box. Those are probably good to have. And this model I got actually has a smaller spacing in between pixels. I think it's five millimeters between pixels. This is like double the resolution because most of the ones that are really cheap like this or inexpensive are 10 millimeters between pixels. So this makes it better, supposedly. And the way this works is there is an instruction manual, but from what I understand, you have to plug this thing into your computer. There we go. It's got two lines of text because most of the ones that are 40 by 8 only have one line. It's a P5, 5 millimeter spacing instead of 10. So it's double the resolution, double the lines of text, and hardly anything more money. So look for that when you're ordering these things. Here is the information about the software. It says uh, plug USB memory to your PC or laptop. So it's probably got a USB something. And go from there. I'm going to go get my laptop and start working on this. Here is the information that I, on the one I have. Model number, is it? Yeah, model LED scrolling sign, 80 by 40 indoor serial number, but uh, model LED scrolling sign. Hmm. I was looking around, I didn't see any USB memory, but then I looked in the box and I see there's some stuff I didn't get out. I'm thinking at first that I need to buy some USB memory. But this one's tucked in the corner, so don't forget about it. That looks like the USB memory right here. And the power, the plug, the inverter for AC USB memory. And it was blinking. It's plugged in the USB, started blinking. And recognizes the USB drive. Alright, there it is, USB drive. And direction for use, I think that's file instruction manual. Direction for use, I think that's where it said it's in there. Uh, and where is there's an EXE program, I think. Oh wait, not quite yet. That's the one right there. Open it up. Do I want to allow it? Yes. And and that opens some software here. It's got to figure out how to use this. So I got the software. Now it says to take your USB memory to the sign and pin U disk parameters. So I plug the sign in, I guess. Oh. Yeah, plug the sign in. Looks pretty good. Nice. Okay, now I plug this, here's the USB, I took it out. Put it into the side here, the, where the USB goes. And I guess it's supposed to do something there. Loading. Okay. It says okay. So am I done? Now insert USB memory back into the PC and you're ready for programming. Okay, good. It's doing a little demo here, I guess. Two lines of text, yes. There's an animal, and I think we've seen this part of it. It just keeps going. So for this, I want to start by adding rich text. I'm just going to do simple text here. And there, opens up some more information here. So it's got little drop down menus. I can choose the font, the size of it, the color, all that stuff. So here's my text I'm putting in. You can choose, I guess you can choose one, only one color for the whole thing. That's what it looks like, and only one font size for the whole thing. And I got bold. You can do normal color. That's what normal color looks like you see in the screen. 
or three color or gradient color. That looks the coolest, actually. I'm going to leave it on that, I think. Wait, now I'm finding out you can highlight areas and just change those areas. Color and, like, I can make that italics. I can make it blue, which I want to. Okay, I actually repositioned and flip-flopped them. Actually, you cannot, you cannot do text, I don't think, individually. I can change the fonts, which I have. I've got three different fonts. But um, I had to move flip-flop them because the G's were being lost on the bottom line. You can still see them on the top line. And then you can adjust uh, for scrolling, speed, and delay, and stuff like that. You can adjust that here. So you can also adjust the delay, and then there's a flow border over here. Like, that's the flow border, I think, right there. That looks kind of cool, so I want to activate that. I think, I don't know if that's one or two. I don't know what that one is. Okay, so these are the directions I've been following. This is just basic stuff. You can also add photos and other images and things, which I'm not even going to bother with. And you have to record it. You, do, you can press U Disk Record to record your project. That's right up here. So I'm, I think I'm done. I'm done with everything I'm going to do anyway. But this time we'll record it. They're recording. It's blinking a little bit there. It's doing it. Still recording. Still recording. Okay, file copy finish. Please insert U disk to controller. We'll see how that happens. Take it out and then put it in the sign. Loading. Okay, it says okay. So what do we do now? It says your LED sign should be ready to display your text. Oh, it's working. It took a little bit to come up and I, I, I took the, actually took the memory stick out. I just put the memory stick in and it loaded and now it's doing this. But it, I don't see any border around it. Okay, I'm having a problem here. You may have noticed where everything's playing on this, including this example here. Okay, and the reason why is because um, there's polar LED light. Welcome. Okay, the reason why is because all the stuff is already saved here on the stick as well, including the three things that I put on. So I'm going to have to start deleting some of these things if I am going to get them off of here. That's how I have to do it. All right, so I cleaned it up. I'm down to these four things that I want. So now I'm going to save the U disk record. It's recording it all. Then I'll pop it in after it finishes recording and then remove it, and hopefully it'll be what I want. Okay, let's see if this is what I was looking for. Sunday. I wonder if I can speed this up. Actually, I think it might be on the top speed. Sunday, January 28th. Main event. And by the way, I've never done any of this before. This is you're getting the real thing here, just as I'm able to do it. See, it's, the letters are a little high, but that's because some of them drop down. Annual fest. And a little smiley face. Riverside. Let's see, sorry. Park in Bonita Springs. Ten AM 
to 4 p.m. And of course, it is free. Well, people, no, not everybody knows that. See, hopefully you guys are getting this message. You don't have to watch anymore, by the way. This is just me testing this at the end. I think you know everything else about the unboxing here. But that's one message. I've got four of them. So I think it just plays them in, I don't know if it's random order or a certain order. It's done. There's a clock. Southwest Florida Veg Fest. Like our Facebook page. That's bright. Wow. I wonder if the other one's like that. I thought it was like a black background. I might need to fix that. Yeah, see, these are blue backgrounds. I don't know why. This is really hard to read on the blue background. So I'll have to go into the, the thing and um, the software and adjust that if I can. Because that need, these need to be on black backgrounds. Oh my gosh. You can't even read some of that. So it requires a little tinkering around with, obviously. And that's it. Back to the same, same ones. Let me see in the software. Okay, let's see. We just finished copying this one right here. Now, why would it be on a blue background? It shows it black. I'm going to have to look into this. Okay, a few final tips here. You can rearrange the order that these things are in by using these arrows. Up and down. I've got it in the right order. I end up changing the clock from simulated to digital because simulated really looks bad. And then what I had to do to get uh, the problem with the blue background, I had to turn off the flow border. For whatever reason, it's not compatible. I don't know with that. It seemed to work before, but it was giving me a blue background. So if you know anything about it, let me know in the comments. Any other questions you have about how this stuff works, let me know in the comments. You know, here I've got, this is the one part I've got working, but I'll show you here before I go uh, how it's working correctly, the, the part that was a problem before. Here you go. Okay, see, there's no border on it, but it's scrolling across, and it's got a black background. So you can read it now. And I'll actually show you what the other clock looks like, too. Because that analog thing was just really unreadable. So you, you can adjust the delay what, where it stays here. That goes away, and then we should have the clock. It gives a time and a date when you use digital. And just make sure that you program in the right time. Um, and check that when you when you got your sign going, if you got a clock. Let's see. It should be clocked now. Oh, that's the wrong one. That didn't work right. All right, I, I got to reload it one more time. Okay, I got the clock up here, but I don't know how to make sure it's accurate. That's the problem. If anybody knows how to do that, let me know. Otherwise, that is the end of the video and completes the unboxing and setup of this device, the Polar LED light.